I know I'm a few weeks late, but happy new year and welcome back to In The Metal. Today I'm gonna to be sharing three watches, a tradition, and a very strong Rolex opinion with you. These are the watches, a sleeper grail, an alarm, and a very rare Rolex bird, all available right now in the Theo and Harris watch shop. More on them and what makes them worth your time later. My father and I have a tradition. On the first Monday of the new year, we have lunch. In, in many ways, food and leisure are the last things that we want. We're bloated from the holidays and thirsty for professional wins after some time off. But from a different angle, it's exactly what we need. It's not one last storm of unnecessary carbs and Spanish free Oaxaca to end off the holidays in, in gluttonous fashion. It's the first of many in a new year. I wore my Omega Seamaster, which my parents gifted me for my 21st birthday. I have it on our Mojave strap, which was handmade in Texas. I think it also looked really good on our Amalfi. Those yellow tones in the brown complement the dial just perfectly, and that blue lining on the Amalfi is just choice. My dad wore his Nomos World Timer, a watch that I gifted him last year for Christmas, a brilliant complication from Glasshütte. He keeps it on our Sark strap, which was originally purchased for his yellow gold 1601, which has been since paired by my mother with a matching presidential bracelet. Lucky him. So those are the watches that we wore. And before I tell you about the watches that I have here, let me tell you a little bit about our lunch. We ate as we always do at Casa Vasca. It's a very special place where the food is honest and humble and your final drinks are always on the house. It's a place where men, who are mostly masons, but whose weathered faces could pass for those of sailors, gather on their lunch breaks to enjoy familiar, probably nostalgic foods and the pleasure of airing grievances that they wouldn't dare at home. We ate Cayos. Spanish tripe in sauce thickened by the starch of chickpeas and gelatin of lesser pork cuts. We ate this way, we always eat this way, because most of all it just tastes really good, but maybe more profoundly because we know what's to come in the new year. Stress, looming anxiety, all because of work. The pressure of meeting what are most probably unnecessarily high expectations. It's comforting to see through the stress and know that no matter what, what's truly important, a warm meal and good company will always be there. If we fail, which we always might, we know that we will most certainly still have enough money for Kaios. No matter what happens, everything is going to be all right. Watches are unimportant to the time. They can't speed, slow, or stop it, and our phones tell it better. But as vessels for memories, they know few rivals. My dad and I didn't coordinate the watches that we wore for lunch, but subconsciously, we both chose to wear watches that represent our bond as father and son. I think that's incredible. The watch on your wrist, unlike your fucking iPad, will mean something to someone one day if it doesn't already. Something that will make them smile, walk a little taller, surely at some point cry, but it will mean something. Okay, now, the watches. In 2012, just four years after launching his namesake watch brand, Ralph Lauren released this, the Slim Classique. And it is, in my opinion, one of the greatest dressed watches of the 21st century. It came in two sizes, 38 and 42, this being the former. The finishing throughout is breathtaking. It's elegant, it's glamorous, it is no doubt high luxury. It's powered by a Piaget movement too, so no expense was spared there either. I have been looking for one of these for years. And in the last month that I've had the opportunity to own it, I have, I, I have stared at it for more hours than I have worn it, believe it or not. It's that kind of watch. It is, it is that well made. It is verging on art. Now something old, a 1964 Tudor alarm in just remarkable condition. Its function is so unique and interesting, but it's not the only showstopper here. Take a look at the dial. Not only does it feature these ornate arrowhead markers and, and a red alarm hand, but even this small rose logo. I mean, it, it, it's the little details like that that just drive me nuts. And now something even older. This Rolex Oyster Perpetual left Geneva in 1948 
you can believe it. And here's what's most interesting. Rolex is synonymous with the word oyster, and it's taken two distinct meanings. One, a three-link sport bracelet, and second, a case design. There are slight variations between dress and sport oyster cases, but they certainly share the same design language. But this oyster has none of those design hallmarks. It's completely different, because while oyster is a bracelet and a case, at its root, it's Rolex's mark of water resistance, something that made them the titan they are today. Which brings me to my somewhat hard Rolex opinion. I adore Rolex, we know this. And I, and I love this Bombay. I have one for myself, actually. I think it is so special to be able to own such a, such a unique part of the brand's history. And frankly, I think that the Bombay cases are so much cooler than many of the designs that came after it. But Rolex never could have gone on to reach the heights that we know it has with interesting, superior designs like this. Rolex is mass market. It's, it's designed to be nearly unobjectionable. But this is particular, it's specific, it's bold, it's not for everyone, which is exactly why it couldn't be a part of the scale plan for the brand that is designed to be for everyone. So that's it. A story, three watches, and a Rolex opinion. If you love watches like I do, if you think that they mean something more than the time, then head on over to theoandharris.com and shop our selection of vintage watches and handmade straps. They're unique and they're special, and once they're gone, they're gone for good. <laughs>